In this video, we're going to revisit a project that was originally made for the browser using JavaScript, and we're going to replicate it in Touch Designer. It uses this illustration style with these hashed lines or engraved lines, where the stroke weight varies according to the brightness of the image. Here are a few other applications of the same style. In our case, the lines are 3D elements, so we can also simulate the Etra video synthesizer, where the depth of the lines also varies according to the brightness of the image. Here's the project running in Touch Designer using the same video as the project in the browser. We don't need to use the same video. Uh, we can use uh, an image. In this case, we're using the Trillium image that ships with uh, Touch Designer. And we can use the slider here to change the depth. And it's a fairly simple network. And we're going to recreate this from scratch. So the first thing we need here is a SOP to define our line. So we're going to use a grid SOP. I already know that I want the width to be 72. We only need two rows and the number of columns is going to be relative to the width. So we need an expression which is going to be me.par size x times four. Four times the the width of the of this sub here. Let's call it a line. So we can refer to it as a line. We drop a null and we can already drop our standard uh, rendering setup here by middle click, go to comp and click on geometry. We also need a camera comp and we need a render top. Then from the render top, we attach a null and we're going to call it out one and toggle the display flag. We can see our line here. It's a bit big. Let's zoom out a bit. Let's say 100. Now we can see our line. Uh, we need a bunch of these lines. So we need to use geometry instancing. So we're going to toggle this on. And now we need an operator to uh, drive our instances. We're going to start by dropping another grid sop here. And this one I'm going to call stack. For this one, I want 40 rows and only one column. And the height here is going to be the same as the number of rows. So I need another expression, which is me.par.rows. Let's drop another null. We're going to change from sub to chop. So I need a sub two. And now here in our geometry, we can already reference our sub to one. And I'm only interested in the translate Y property. So I'm going to select TY. And that is enough to show us our stack of lines. It, it looks a bit like a solid block because the, the height of the line is one and the distance between the lines is also one. So let's go to our line and change the height to 0 0.5. Now we can see our lines a bit better, but we want them to, to be affected by an image. So we need an image here. Let's drop a movie file in top and we can already change the image to the trillium. From that, we drop a null, and I'm going to call it colors. In order to use these colors in our geometry, we need a material, and I'm going to use a GLSL material. Let's drop it on top of our geometry and select parameter material. So the lines are all white and we want them to use the colors of this top here. So I need to reference that in our uh, GLSL material. I'll go to the samplers one tab and I'm going to create the first sampler, which I'm going to call S colors and reference our top called colors. 
now I need a pixel shader to use that uh, as color sample that we created. So I need to edit the pixel shader. Let me drop it here. Full screen. We don't need this line. We need to declare a uniform sampler to the S colors. And now I need to update the values of this vec for color um, with the colors of our texture. So I need a native function called texture, which takes two parameters. The first one is going to be our S colors, so our sampler. And the second one, we still don't have it available here in our pixel shader. These are going to be the UV coordinates that we need to read our texture. Touch Designer provides us with the UV coordinates, but they go to the vertex shader. So let's also edit the vertex shader. And we want to pass the coordinates to the pixel shader. So we need to create a varying. So I'll type out vec3 vuv. The lowercase v is for varying. And the value of our vuv is uv square brackets zero. So these uh, these coordinates here are provided by touch designer now we save this we go back to our pixel shader and import that by typing in vec vuv vec3 vuv and now we can use our vuv here uh, in this case the function is expecting a vec2 so we need only the first two parameters the first two values of that uh, vec3 so i'll type st back to touch designer and we can see now that our lines are using the colors of the texture. The problem is that each line is using the entire image as a texture and we want the, the stack of lines to use the image, not each line. So we need our coordinates to be adjusted according to where the line is on the stack. And and we, we know that uh, because we can read the index of each line uh, in our pixel shader sorry in our vertex shader so back to the vertex shader there is a function uh, provided by touch designer called td instance id this returns an integer and we're going to store it in a variable called row uh, and we can now update the y property of our uv coordinates based on which row we are divided by the total number of rows which uh, we still don't have uh, in our shader but we can pass it in from our stack here so we copy the parameter of our number of rows go to all our glsl material go to vectors one and we create a new uniform called u rows and here we paste the reference. Now we can go back to our vertex shader. Let's declare that uniform uniform float u rows. And now we can replace that here and save it. Go back to touch designer, and now we can see that the image is uh, correctly uh, replicated across our lines. It's a bit difficult to see, so let's add. Um, an operator, let's insert an operator here just before our out one. Uh, let's drop a transform top and here in the background color set the alpha to one and toggle on the comp over background color. It's a bit easier to see now. Next, I want these lines to vary in depth according to the, the colors of this input image. So we can go back to our vertex shader and we can see that the position of the shader is on this letter P here, which I cannot uh, alter directly, but I can create a copy, which I'm going to call pause. And it's going to be a vec4, which is going to use that P and a constant of one. Now I can alter pause and I can say, for example, that pause Z is 50. And I can I just need to remember to replace this P here by pause, save this, go back to touch designer, and now you can see that all of the lines moved uh, towards the camera. 
I want them to move according to the colors. So I need to use the colors here in our vertex shader, just like we used in the pixel shader. So let's type uniform sampler 2D as colors. And now we can extract uh, the brightness of the pixels by using the same function texture as colors v v v s t and we don't need all four channels we only need one for the brightness so let's use the red channel and this is a float i can store it in a variable which i'm going to call brightness and if i multiply now brightness by 50 and go back to touch designer now you can see that the the pixels or the lines uh, vary in depth according to the pixel colors uh, the lines are a bit jagged uh, i think they can be a bit smoother so before this null here let's drop a, a blur top and let's set the filter size to 15. okay now they're a bit smoother uh, next we want the line thickness to vary according to the brightness so let's go back to our pixel shader oh, actually before we go to shader let's have a look at uh, our geometry here i'm going to activate it press w to see the wireframe press p to see the display options and toggle point positions so let's zoom in a bit more let's look at these values here especially this second value after the comma we can see that at the top of our line they are positive and at the bottom they are negative so bigger than zero at the top and smaller than zero at the bottom we can use that to change the height of our line so back to our vertex shader and we could say that pause y we need to modify pause y and it, it's based on whether they are bigger than zero or smaller than zero so first we need a conditional if pause bigger than zero pause y is going to be something relative to the brightness and it's going to be only half of it because we only want either the top half or the bottom half now if i duplicate this line and invert the operator to be smaller than zero then i want this to be also inverted so put a minus in front now if i save this and go to touch design i can see it's already working uh, but now we lost the value which is the height of the line that we defined earlier uh, so now it's it's treating the height of the lines as one and we define it as 0.5 so we need to pass this to our shader Let's copy this parameter here, go to our GLSL material in uh, vectors one. Let's create another uniform. I'm going to call it U row height and I'm going to paste the reference. Now go back to our shader and declare that as uniform float U row height. And we use that value in our expression here and save it and now we get the, the correct values here um, I would like to be able to control the effect uh, a bit better and I can probably do that with a, with a level top here uh, but I don't want to alter the colors I want to alter the brightness independently from the colors so I'm going to drop another null from our blur top And I'll call it brightness. Now I can insert a level operator to modify only the brightness. In fact, for the brightness, we don't need all four channels, so I can change the pixel format uh, to 16 bit float mono. And let's uh, tell our shader about this new texture. So I'm going to create another sampler here called S brightness and reference the top brightness. Now back to our vertex shader. Let's replace this S color by S brightness. Now if I modified the levels here, I can 
change the effect without changing the colors. Um, I'm going to use some values that I tested earlier. So black level 0 0.2, brightness 1.2, gamma can stay at 1, and contrast 1.8. Uh, the depth is a bit extreme here, so let's try something milder, like 15. Okay, so now we can recognize our image again. And perhaps we can control that um, the, the depth here from our network uh, with a slider. So let's drop a slider comp. And we need a select chop to be able to use that value. I want to change the range, so I'm going to drop a math uh, chop and change the range to 0 to 50 and then a no, so I can use this value. I'm going to call this depth. Let's go to our GLSL shader in our vectors one tab, another uniform called u depth, and the value is this reference here. So let's reference this chop. Now if we go to our uh, pixel shader, we can declare that uniform uniform float u depth and we can replace our constant here by that uniform. Now back to touch designer if we activate the slider we can control the effect here. And in the original video we were not using uh, colors, uh, we were tinting the the input image uh, white and we can do that here, we can have that option so we can uh, create a toggle button to to use either color or white and um, so we drop a button comp and attach a select and also a null which I'm going to call white now we also need to tell our shader about uh, this value. So we create a new uniform called U white and we reference this new chop. This time we're changing colors. So we need to, uh, to change our pixel shader. So we go to a pixel shader and declare uniform float U white. And in this case, it's as the conditional. So we say if u white is bigger than zero, then we need to override our color value and just pass a full vector four uh, with a value of one. Back to Touch Designer, activate this. You click on the button, and everything goes white. Um, this is the effect, and we can test it with some other images. So let's uh, pick some other image here. Let's pick this butterfly one. And we can see that the effect worked, but the aspect is a bit wrong. And that's because we hard coded the number of rows and also the width of the line. Now I'm fine with the number of rows, but I want the width to vary uh, according to the input image. So for that, we need uh, an expression here. First, we reference the operator stack and we read par dot rows, the, the number of rows. We divide that by operator colors and we read the height parameter. So this gives us the ratio between number of rows and the height of the image. We wrap that in between parentheses and multiply that by the operator colors width. Now we can see that the aspect is correct. And if we go back to uh, our trillium, it is also going to work. Okay, so this is the effect and this concludes the part one. Uh, in part two, we're going to look at adding some interaction and some animation.